morning, this is Brian. Today is Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, and I am near uh, Stevenson Peak in the Laguna Mountains. Stevenson Peak uh, is up this way with a big, uh, like a big Doppler ball or something like that. It's like a little re research station. So, we're here in a nice, cool, brisk morning here. Just enjoying just enjoying the views out towards Salton Sea and uh, the desert and that is looking over towards the highest point I believe in the Lagunas, that's Cuyapaipe, 6,378 feet. Uh, from what I understand it's on uh, tribal lands. It's not really accessible to the public. So I'm up here enjoying the nice cool breeze on this last day of May. Up here, checking out the sights. We'll admit though, that would be a look like a really cool peak to climb. Walking along the access road gated up there, so I believe uh, hiking up to the top of Stevenson would be ill-advised also. So up here, what do we got? Living here in Southern California, or in California period, not surprised to see Canyon Live Oak, Quercus chrysolopus. Already know when you're in any mountainous area in Southern California, you're going to come across that one. And cup leaf ceanothus right here, ceanothus perplexons. It's going into seed right now. The little seed capsules are developing on it. You can see barely. You can see the Doppler ball up there on Stevenson Peak. And we got pink brack manzanita, Arctostophilus pringly subspecies drupacea. Uh, missed it in bloom. But it's starting to go into, uh, it's starting, should be developing its fruits pretty soon. Oh, wait a minute. No, they haven't flowered yet. No, they're just developing their flower buds. Wow. I guess they flower, they flower later. We're... we're we're at an elevation of 6,000 feet over here. Maybe just slightly above 6,000 feet here in the Laguna Mountains. Laguna Mountains are uh, uh, part of the peninsular mountain ranges that come f that at the north terminate by uh, uh, two major mountain ranges, the Santa Ana Mountains bordering Orange and Riverside counties, and the San Jacinto Ranges and go all the way down through to the tip of Baja, California. So the Lagunas are part of the Peninsular Ranges. See right here, we're, look, we're looking south, we're looking southeast over here, way off in the distance. Those are uh, parts of the, I believe the Sierra Juarez, Sierra Juarez Plateau in northern Baja, California, where we get some pretty cool areas over there of uh, pretty much a continuation of the type of stuff you see here, basically. Uh, Jeffrey Pine, Pinion, uh, Black Oak, probably. Of course, Canyon Live Oak. A lot of our typical chaparral shrubs here. So we're in the realm of pink brack manzanita. And here's a nice old weathered birch leaf mountain mahogany or birch leaf circa carpus. Circa carpus betuloides, variety betuloides. This one's an old seasoned veteran here. You see. Very, very well seasoned. Beautiful shrub here. And 
then we have a relatively endemic species of uh, Yerbasanta here, and it's a uh, not, not a species, but a, a variety. Now, if you're if you've seen some of my videos in the Angeles National Forest, the San Gabriel Mountains in LA County, you probably recognize this gre the greasy leafed shrub here as Eriodictyon trichocalyx. Well, this is a variety of Eriodictyon trichocalyx. The ones in the Angeles National Forest are the typical variety Eriodictyon trichocalyx variety trichocalyx, but these ones are Eriodictyon trichocalyx variety lanatum and they're in full bloom right now. So you look under on the other side of leaves got a really white and fuzzy really it's really white and fuzzy. So you'll find that quite a bit up here in the Laguna range here in the peninsular mountains. Let's see there's old uh, stone structures over here. Something's going on over here. Thinking about maybe getting into some uh some hikes today, uh, maybe a couple of small ones. I'm just wondering what this uh, structure is. It kind of continues up that way. I don't know. I wonder if there's a really good viewpoint around here. Looks like an old dirt track. Probably from back in the day. you'll notice about a lot of our uh, north and south trending mountain ranges uh, just like the well I'd say, I'd say pretty much a lot like them uh, you'll notice that the east slope of the mountain ranges and this is looking about northeast right here the east slope of the mountain ranges are very dramatic Sierra Nevada is a perfect example of this. Where you have gentle foothill, gentle foothill, and very dramatic, very dramatic, steep, rugged east slopes. The Santa Ana Mountains are kind of similar, maybe on a much smaller scale. Their uh, east side is a lot steeper than the west side. Bills in from all the coastal foothills in Orange County. Uh, the Laguna is much gentler on the west side, hilly, and then dramatic on the east side. The uh, San Jacinto Mountains are a prime example, also with lots of foothills on the west side building up to the tall crest and then dropping off very steeply. Now I can't say from experience, I haven't done it myself, but people hiking up the, uh, the cactus clouds around the Skyline Trail from Palm Springs by the Palm Springs Museum, that's a doozy of a hike from what I understand. It's supposed to be one of the toughest day hikes in the United States. provides testament to that. You don't get a lot of foothills on the east side. It's you're pretty much going up a really steep slope getting up to the to the to the mountain ridge. So one of the one of the most dramatic views is we found over towards the north a little bit by Monument Peak and especially by Garnet Peak. Uh, those are two peaks I've done before here. And they have very extremely dramatic, especially Garnet Peak. Uh, you're looking down Storm Canyon and it's just insane how steep and crazy it is. You can almost, you almost feel like you can almost touch the desert floor. So what else do we have? Well, we've got some mountains over here. These are the Santa Rosa Mountains. That right there is Rabbit Peak. Villager Peak is one of these over here, and it's Toro Peak over there. That's going towards Riverside County, except Villager Peak is in northern San Diego County. And here we 
we got some of the rugged, higher summits here in the Laguna Range. So coming up here, I've been up, I've been up, I've been up in this area a few times when I still lived in Orange County. It's been a few years since I've been here. It's been about five. bit further away from where I lived. <laughs> it was a very long drive to get down here from North Orange County, but now that I live here in San Diego County, it's a much, 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 much shorter drive. And I live really close to Interstate 8. So, coming up here was cake. And of course, what do we got here? Oh yes, indeed. Here are beautiful Beautiful parish blue curls right here. This is Trichostema parishi. It's a uh, small, small woody base shrub in the mint family, and it smells so pleasant. Just very gently rub the the stems or the leaves. So this is parish blue curls right here. And there's another. There are a few other species of blue curls here in Southern California, and there and most of them are annual herbs. A few of them. But we do have a few uh, perennial subshrubs slash shrubs, and Trichostema lanatum, the uh, woolly blue curls, and Trichostema parishi, this one here, are the two perennial shrubs of the genus Trichostema. Now, trying to tell these apart from Trichostema lanatum is a little tricky because they are kind of fuzzy plants. But one thing you'll know, one thing you'll see. Is you'll be able to see, one thing is you'll be able to see the flower stalks. You'll be able to see the flower stalks on Trichostema parishi because Trichostema lanatum is much fuzzier, and the flower stalks at the base of the uh, flowers are pretty much obscured. But here, if you look carefully enough, you can see them. So that's and plus Trichostema parishi grows it can grow up to much higher elevations than Trichostema lanatum. I don't think uh, Trigostema lanatum can grow up here at 6,000 feet, to my knowledge. So, that was parish blue curls, Trigostema parishi. I think the parishi is much more common in San Diego County than Trigostema lanatum, if I remember correctly. And then, uh, besides the, the many Jeffrey pines that we have growing here, the occasional incense cedar and stuff like that, we also have a tree with a very confused taxonomy. And I'm going to go much more into detail in a spotlight video that I'm planning on recording sometime today. And this is what some would consider to be peri pinion, Pinus quadrifolia, and others would consider this to be Sierra Juarez pinion, uh, pin Pinus juarezensis. And Peri pinion generally has four needles, but can have anything from, I believe, three to five per bundle. Uh, but it's predominantly, by far, supposed to be four. And Juarez pinion uh, has a higher number of different needle numbers from three to five. So, I'm not going to go too much into this video. But as of now, for, this, for the sake of this video, I'll term this is uh, Pinus quadrifolia, the peri pinion. Uh, check out my spotlight video that I'm going to be doing today about uh, the peri pinion, and uh, I'll go into more detail about that, because that, that is a little too much detail for the scope of this video. But, just enjoying a beautiful day in the Chaparral, up here in the Laguna Mountains. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another video.